Now, I want you to turn with me this morning where the Lord wants to speak to us. And He's going to speak to us this morning from the 23rd Psalm. Psalm number 23. As I was seeking the Lord for His message for this morning, two words, two words came to my mind. And I found them in this psalm, and I don't think you could find them in a better place than Psalm 23. And we're going to take the time, and we're going to read the psalm together now. David could say, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, I want you to notice something when he speaks in this psalm. It's so personal. It doesn't say, The Lord is our shepherd. Everything is me, everything is I, and everything is mine. So it's personal, and it's personal for you. Now listen to what he says. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lay down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy, st thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in, a pre in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading of His own precious truth. Now, friends, this morning, if there's one thing, if there's one thing this morning the devil would seek to make you and to make me doubt, now, I want you to get this. Well, the Lord wants you to get it. If there's one thing the devil will try and get you and me to doubt, and it's this, it's the goodness of God. There's many ways, child of God, that the devil will try his dirty best to get us to doubt and to get us stop believing in the goodness of God. I had a lady who said to me just the other day, if there's such a thing as the goodness of God, why is there so much suffering in the world? Where was the goodness of God, she continued to tell me. Where was the goodness of God when my next-door neighbor's wee three-year-old girl died of leukemia last year? Where was, the good of, where was the goodness of, the, of God then, she said. Where was the goodness of God when that wee innocent baby suffered all its wee short life? Where was the goodness of God when that little one had to suffer so much pain? Where was the goodness of God when the mommy and daddy had to carry that wee white coffin from their home, where was the goodness of God? You know, we're all only human. And I thank God, God knows we're only human. Because it tells us in Psalm 103, He remembereth that we are but dust. 
And listen, child of God, it's in dark, difficult times like this, the devil can make it very easy for us to doubt the goodness of God. And there was another lady a fortnight ago, and I met her across at the old people's home just from across where I live. And she stopped the car because I had Archie out for a wee walk, and she was all googly-eyed over the wee dog. And I says, are you going to visit somebody up here, love? She says, I am. My mother's here. And she says, I mind you, life goes round very quick, and it's not funny and wonderful how you can end. She says, that that's if you see it that long, she says. Say, what do you mean, dear? I had a husband. 52 years of age, who died before he got his heart transplant. Five months after he died, my young son of 20, 20, five months after his daddy died, he died of a silent heart attack, laying sleeping in bed. And then tears come down her cheeks. I tears. And of a young lassie, of 28. She's all I have to live for, she said. And they've discovered a cancerous lump. Why does God allow these things to happen? Well, friends, let me explain to you the answer as I explain the answer. Where is God's goodness at such times? We have every right to ask the question. God's goodness is there all the time. God's goodness never fails us. And God's goodness never forsakes us. You see, dear friend, this morning, Adam's sin that we've been speaking to the boys and girls about, do you know what Adam's sin done that day? Adam's sin plunged the human race into a dreadful tragedy. It was Adam's sin that brought death into the world. It was Adam's sin that brought suffering into the world. It was Adam's sin that brought disease into the world. Adam's sin, friends. Listen, if you doubt the goodness of God this morning, listen, look to the cross. Look to His bloodied forehead. Look at the nails in His hands and feet. Look at His visions marred more than any other man, because there the goodness of God outshines everything. Because it was through the goodness of God that He didn't let the human race go there. The human race is plunged into tragedy, and it's because of man's own choice. But God didn't let mankind, and God didn't let the human race go its own merry man. God stood in and sent His Son into this world, friends. And friend, at Calvary's cross, in the person of His own Son, listen, there you'll behold the goodness of God in all its fullness. Friend, see Him this morning. If there's one who was called the man of sorrows, it was Him. There's no wee man used to come in in my last job. My previous circle of employment, you call him Peter Parkinson. He's a man who could hardly, a young man. He could hardly put one foot in front of the other. As long as I can ever remind him, he was always in two sticks, and if he was in bad, he was in two crutches. How are you the day, Peter? And him could hardly move, and pain that's upon his face. You know what he used to tell me? God is good. He says, Peter, do you honestly believe that? And many a time Peter Parkinson used to fall in front of me. And every time he fell, he used to look up and say, God is still good. I'm telling you, friend, God's goodness is always there. But never you allow the devil for you to doubt the goodness of God. And I'll tell you another thing. Don't you ever let the devil make you doubt the mercy of God. Thine God is not only a, good, a God of goodness, He's a God of mercy. 
Do you doubt the mercy of God this morning? Is there someone here this morning and you doubt the goodness of God? Remember this, it is but for the Lord's mercy. We're not come soon. Titus chapter 3 and verse 5 says, According to His mercy, He has saved us. You read Psalm 136. Psalm 136. Twenty-six times. Psalm 136. Twenty-six times it says in that psalm, The Lord's mercy endureth forever. You know, when I was a wee nipper, I used to go out to my granny's, and one of her, two of her favorite programs was the, was the wrestling on a, on a Saturday afternoon. Four o'clock, you don't have even walked in front of the TV. But then there was another favorite program she used to watch, and I used to sit on her knee and watch it. It was a, it was a, uh, it was a program called One Man and His Dog. Do you, ever, do you remember that one? Well, hands up if you remember. That's good. That's good. But you know what I'm talking about. One man and his dog. And I used to love the sceneries, but I, I, I was fascinated. I was fascinated the way, the way this boy whistled and he growled and he shouted. And the dog was at, the, the dog was at his command. Hang on! And the dog went down. And then he whistled. Whoop! And then the dog would get up and run away around here and all. I says, this is great. But then there came on the finals. And the finals, this was powerful. And this was the great. And the, I'll never forget the dog I, I wanted to win. It was called Spot. It was called Spot, and I wanted Spot to win, because he looked like my granny's dog, but he didn't win. But then there came the, the two dog man trials, and the same man had another two dogs, and you'll never guess what they called the two dogs, goodness and mercy. And this fellow brought goodness and mercy out. Now, I never knew anything about the 23rd Psalm when I was a wee nipper, I didn't know what it was, but I remember goodness and mercy, and they came out there with the sheep dogs. And I could never forget, this was unreal. This man could whistle, that dog would do one thing, this dog would do another thing, and he could talk to the two dogs the one time. Tracy can hardly talk to me in the one time and get me to do what she wants. But this man could control two dogs in the one time, goodness and mercy. And they were able to get the, they were able to get the sheep through the gates here and, and over a wee bridge here. It was fascinating to watch these dogs working. Unfortunately, goodness and mercy didn't win it either. Now, here's my text, and this is, for, this is from God to you this morning. Are you listening to it? Psalm 23 and verse 6. Now, listen to what it says. It says there, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, let me look at that again. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me when? It says, all the days of my life. It doesn't say goodness and mercy will follow you through the good days and not the bad days. Oh, no. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life through those dark, difficult, demanding days. Goodness and mercy, under the command of the heavenly shepherd, they shall follow us all the days of our life. Do you know something, child of God, was sang that opening hymn this morning, He leadeth me, O blessed thought. But you know, sometimes the Lord leads us up very steep paths and very rough paths and very narrow paths. And you know, sometimes the Lord has to lead His sheep through a fearful path. The Lord sometimes leads us through a fearful path. You know, it takes very little to startle sheep. It takes very little to disturb sheep. You know, it takes very little to disturb the people of God. I wonder this morning, is our heavenly shepherd leading you along a fearful path? Listen, love. Has this week brought you a wee bit of trouble? A wee scare, maybe? Listen, I don't know. God knows, and God wants you to know. He knows about it. And you're troubled this morning. 
What about you, brother? Are you, are you traveling along the fearful path today? This incoming week has frightened you in some sort of way. That's why I always seek every week, you know, Lord, what would you have me to say to these people? Because it's vital that I bring to you the Lord's message. And I wonder this morning, is the Lord bringing you along a fearful path? You remember in Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, how the disciples got into the boat that day, and remember they were following the Lord. The Lord said to them that day, let us pass over on to the other side. And it was in Luke's Gospel where we read, and Jesus got into the boat, and His disciples followed Him. But do you know something, child of God, where the Lord Jesus may lead you and where He may lead me this morning? It could be a long, a fearful path. And these disciples, as they get into the boat, they were right there where the Lord wanted them. Let us pass by over to the other side, and they weren't halfway across the sea until a storm come. I'll tell you, sometimes the Lord leads us over stormy seas. But here's how the Lord wants you to deal with this path this morning. The Lord doesn't want you to focus on the trouble that you face in front of you. God wants you to focus on goodness and mercy behind you. Do you see the path where you are right now? And maybe you've come to this meeting this morning and something has frightened you greatly. And I don't know what it may be, but listen, something has. Listen, there's something the Lord wants you to know this morning. Listen, don't be worrying about it, because coming after you there on your heels is goodness and mercy, my goodness and my mercy. You know there's times in my own life when I look back along the pathway that I've come, and I think of the many things that scared me. When I think of the things that frightened me in life, and looking back now, I could see a way back under during those times that I was frightened. You know, God's goodness and God's mercy were following me right through that particular time. And I'm sure this morning it's the same with you. You look back to times when you thought, how on earth am I going to cope? And, and trouble came. And looking back, somehow the Lord led you through it. And you look back this morning, and you can say, ah, yes, goodness and mercy followed me along that fearful path. Listen, child of God, I don't know what has frightened you or what fears you. Take a wee look behind you. Goodness and mercy are out behind you, following after you. You see, it says in the text, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Goodness and mercy will follow you along the fearful path. I'll tell you, goodness and mercy will follow you along the foggy path. And mind you, sometimes the path can be foggy. There's nothing more disorientating than you being caught in the midst of dense fog. I remember my unsaved days coming home, me and a wee boy called Wesley Bartley. And he drove a wee minute, and we're coming home from a disco in the Valley Hotel in Five Mile Town. And between Five Mile Town and Clacher, we hit an awful dense fog. It was so dense, we, the lights was no good. We tried to drive on with lights off, lights dipped, side lights. It was so dense. And for two, I'm not exaggerating, it must have been at least, well, it, it felt like two hours. And here's me hanging out of the wee mini through the window with a flashlight along the side of the road. It was so dense. And we were traveling and traveling and traveling and traveling. And all I could keep an eye on was the wee white dashes on just at the edge of the curbstone. And after a long period of time, after a long period of time, I can tell you now, after a long period of time, I thought I was never going to get home. 
we could see lights in the distance. And tiny, sorry, where we call them tiny. And, and he says to me, there's lights. Is this Acher or Clacher? I says, Wesley, I couldn't tell you where. This is a couple of months in town for all I know. It was so dense. Do you remember the two on the road to Emmaus? They had to walk through a very foggy patch. So much so, child of God, did you notice? So much so that when the Lord Jesus drew nigh to them, and when the Lord Jesus spoke to them, they didn't even recognize Him. So, were, so was their, di their disorientation. You know, they said, they said, but we, but we trusted, we trusted, we trusted. It had been He which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since things, these things were done. And you know, they thought when the Lord Jesus would come, we thought this was Him. We thought this was He that was going to come and redeem Israel. And they put Him to a cross, and now He's dead. And their hopes were dashed and their heads were down. And when their hopes were dashed and their heads were down, then this dense fog of unbelief gripped them. I wonder this morning, are you walking along this path? It's a foggy path because maybe some job you've been trying to get didn't work out. And life for you seems so disorientated. You don't know what way to turn, what way to go, what way to ask. Maybe this morning life for you, uh, some hope has been dashed. Maybe some wee plan that you've planned hasn't worked out. And you say, where do we turn now? Well, that's the way these disciples were on the road to Emmaus. We thought it was him. We thought this was it. Israel, we're going to be redeemed now. Ah, but they put him to a cross. Now he's dead and all hope's gone. That's you. Are you walking through this dense fog this morning, this foggy path? Because sometimes the shepherd leads us not only along a fearful path, but sometimes it can be a foggy path, and you just can't see too far ahead of yourself. So much so, child of God, like the two in the road to Emmaus, it can be so dense, life can be so disorientated, we cannot even recognize the Savior when He walks with us. We can't even recognize the Savior as He talks with us. Listen, child of God, I can tell you something this morning. Through those foggy paths, be assured this morning. Listen, if there's somebody in this meeting this morning and you've had your hopes dashed, and plans didn't work out the way you thought they'd work out, listen, listen, here's what the Lord wants you to do this morning. Look behind you. Because my goodness and mercy are following you just right now. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me along the fearful path. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me along the foggy path. Ah, but surely goodness and mercy will follow me along the failure's path. We all fail for men, you sheep. They're prone to go astray too, aren't they? Prone to wander. Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. And sometimes, you know, the sheep can break away from the fold. I remember when I used to bring the cows in with my Uncle James. I remember one particular, he bought a cow in Clacher Mart, and this was our first day home from the meadow. We used to bring it up the meadow, and we'd come to the crossroads, and right up the, across the crossroads brought us up to my Uncle James's farmyard. But this cow, she took a wild notion of turning left. But Shep was what you call the dog. It wasn't a sheep dog, he was a cow dog. And Shep knew she went the wrong way. And what he done, he run up the road and he come back down the road and he started barking into her face and got her turned and scared her back to where, the, where she should be going. It's powerful the way dogs work all the same, isn't it? And do you know someone you can learn a lot from a dog? But here's the thing. Is there somebody here this morning and you've broke away from the fold a wee bit? You're not walking close to the fold the way you did. 
Mind you, sheep can stray. I'll tell you, you can stray, and I can stray, and we can stray. But you know, sometimes God has to send goodness up the road and mercy up the road and come back down again. And sometimes God has to maybe bring trouble across our path. And like sheep, it may not sound, it may not look like goodness when it barks into your face, but it's God's goodness and God's mercy that's trying to get you back into the fold and back to where you should be. Sometimes goodness comes in the form of trouble. Sometimes mercy comes. Mercy can come and bark at us, and it's to get us back in the fold, maybe a wee bit of suffering. You see, goodness and mercy can come in the form of trouble and suffering to get us to stop going our own way and get back into the fold again. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life, along that fearful path where you're walking at this moment, love, along that foggy path where you may be now, sir, along that, that, that failure path that you may be treading on. But I'll tell you, you can't finish this message without this last one. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me along the finishing path. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Do you know, if the Lord tarries, that is, we'll all walk that pathway someday. When our lives come to a finish. And even along the, along the finishing path, Goodness and mercy will be there. And goodness and mercy won't just follow us up to the very door of heaven. They'll follow us through the door. Child of God, whatever path you're traveling, God wants you through my text just to take a wee look behind you. Goodness and mercy are following you. Keeping everything right. And they're not only going to take you through life, they're going to be with you and they'll follow you through death. And goodness and mercy will follow us right in. They'll bring us right into the presence of God. Look behind you now, child of God. Goodness and mercy is there. They always were. They always will be. Until we're safely home. May God bless and encourage your heart for his name.